On this episode of Hack Engineering, we replaced the 50-year-old drive cogs that I grenaded the last go-around on our trusty old sled, along with a custom modification. And because I have no patience, we bought this. So when we left off, <clears throat> I believe I had gone to warm up the sled. And uh, I might have gotten a little over-enthusiastic, did a lap of the yard, and tried to cross the driveway. Went a little fast. Uh, if you remember, we had a little discussion about mm -hmm. how the uh, cogs looked a little dry, a little cracked, but we were going to send it. So send it I did and left about a 100-foot uh, trail of little pieces of cog. So both, both drive cogs ended up pretty well bare of teeth, um, and I had to go to work the next day and we just kind of left it out in pasture. Um, yeah, it's where it broke is where it sat for like a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. So we, we dragged it in, um, got a couple of new cogs, and last night uh, did, the, did the first one to confirm that we could kind of do the repair the way that we thought we could. Um, and now we're... Heading off to, to do the second one to show how it's done. So originally from the factory, these things were riveted together, kind of inconveniently for disassembly because the, um, the swedged piece is on the backside, kind of hard to get to. So we're going to end up center punching all the heads, uh, drilling them out, and replacing the, the cog. Replacing the, what's left of the cog, <laughs> which looks kind of like this, <laughs> with... Something a bit nicer, and this is actually a, uh, a urethane part, so it is somewhat flexible, which is interesting. All the new sprockets are like hard plastic. That's probably why it dried out and fell apart after 50 some years. Yep, so figuring the last one's lasted 50 years. We'll see how long the new ones last, hopefully beyond my lifetime. And uh, here we go. So we got them all drilled out, Here's rivets falling all over the place, and uh, we're going to pull it off. And now all you have to do is hold it up. You just take the steel ring off. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't pull the metal shavings out of it. And then uh, you take what's left of the sprocket off. Hey, that one came off in one piece. The other one definitely did not. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll just put it there for now. That'll be a good, good gambler to trophy. It's a jank sprocket. Um, now, we got to put the sprocket back on, and uh, because this has eight holes and this has seven teeth, they index one direction. So, nope. 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 Am I going to get it? Nope. Probably take you a trash. Look at that. It's kind of like putting a USB drive in. Doesn't look indexed either. There we go. Yep, eight, eight tries. Clean all the metal shavings off of this. Okay, yeah. now this, this is sparkly clean. Uh, you just set it back on. And because we don't have any way to rivet those rivets, we're just going to use some, uh, what are they, quarter by half? Grade quarter by half. Grade 5 8. And then just some lock washers, lock nuts on the other side. Lock washers and nuts. All right, so now we got the bolts in. So the next step is to set the drive shaft on the ground to get two of the teeth. So two of the teeth from each side to set flat, and they both touch 
um, on both sprockets just to make sure it's the teeth are indexed properly to each other. I don't know how well this is going to work. Three minutes. That feels pretty good. And now we just tighten all the bolts. Huh, that's it? That's it. It's just that easy. She's a beaut, Clark. Drive shaft has sprockets on it. Now we'll just put the uh, little rest of the wheels and lock collars on it and stick it back in the chassis. And soon we're going to drive this thing. I like this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Hopefully more than just around your yard three times. It's got to go farther now, right? And this one will actually have brakes. Oh, yeah, I put the lever on. <laughs> <laughs> so Trevor had the unique uh, advantage of taking this out, but I get to put it in somehow. So uh, drive it down through the little uh, three hole and then smash it up and hope that it fits through the uh, gearbox a little easier than it came out. You get to work inside the track, which is really cool. Yeah, but it's lots of fun. Wow. Do you get it lined up yet? No. That's because this rocket has teeth now. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't before. <laughs> I wondered if something changed. There's not a lot of space in this tunnel either. No, and there's this really cool ridge that prevents me from doing what I'm trying to do. So, yeah. In the bearing. There's probably some old timer out there that's watching this. That's having a good laugh because there's a much easier way to do it. But I don't know that way. I just like the path of highest resistance, which happens to be whatever it is I'm doing right now. <laughs> Is it going in the bearing? Well, no. Well, we're inside not? of the casting, not inside of the bearing. Why not? Because there's this lovely track and it's doing all sorts of wonderful things to fight me. Yeah, this isn't. Nearly as cool and fun as taking it apart. Yeah, I just hit it with a hammer and it fell right out. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Success. Oh, Don't oh, drop it. Okay, now, we now we can tip it down and get the sprocket on that side to hold it in place. And then uh, put the bearings and stuff on it. Yeah, I think we're pretty well seated in there. Cool. There it is, isn't it beautiful? Don't wiggle around too much. I wanna do that again. <laughs> so we got the sled back together. The uh, reassembly process was real similar to our previous video where we put the um, chain case back together, sprockets, uh, cover, all that good stuff. I think we're gonna be changing from uh, chain case oil to more of a uh, motorcycle, is it JB? Uh, chain lube? Yeah just because the, the chain cases are on these are always leaking and these aren't gonna see a, a severe duty, if you will. So uh, some of you may have noticed this lovely seating arrangement we have going on now. This is a, a custom feature. Uh, once we got the sled back together, uh, putting the hood on was quite the debacle. 
but once we got it back together, we realized that we didn't have a seat because I bought this. Uh, during the time that, uh, that we were waiting on the drive cogs and for Trevor to come down to help film, I came across this 74 Polaris Electra. Uh, it's a twin cylinder, single carb. The previous owner had done some work to it. It's got new cogs in it, so we're not gonna have to do that. The rear suspension is, you know, broken. So we'll get to that eventually, but uh, it runs pretty well. Uh, single pull start most of the time. So I'm pretty happy with it for just bombing around the backyard. But uh, I did steal the seat from the Custom 2 in the meantime to, to just get around. So once we got everything back together, uh, we went looking in the back of the garage and I used to have a, a 97 Chevy Express van that we put uh, conversion van seats in. And so this thing's just been storing scrap metal in the meantime. Uh, pulled it out, pulled the base and electronics all out of it. And now it is, uh, have been custom adapted for the custom Polaris. So uh, just screwed it into the old rotten uh, base wood. And uh, it has a neat feature that if you kind of kick it on accident or tip the sled over, it kind of ejecto cedos just like a, a jet fighter. So. Um, it's a it's a safety feature. Really, the only thing it's missing is a is a beverage holder. So, uh, Mike, we're gonna go take the sleds for a rip. Stick there.
one thing we have found is this thing is very tippy compared to the, the 340. And, uh, so far it's tolerating the, the one ski driving, but I expect that we will we'll have some broken parts once again in our near to distant future. For whatever reason, Trevor does not like to drive things the way that they're intended to. Three-wheeler, he rides on two wheels. The snowmobile, he rides on one ski. Dirt bikes, he prefers the rear wheel. Can't have nothing nice. It's a little tippy. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just really talking fun. to myself here about how uh, nothing we own, you seem to want to drive the way that it's intended to. The three-wheeler gets driven on, two, on wheels. two wheels. Sled on one ski. Well, it's basically a mountain sled. The, uh, the dirt bike on the rear wheel. Just nothing, nothing can be driven the way that it's intended to. The Why Astro Van in the air. <laughs> At least two of the wheels. This thing, I think, is uh, things fixed. It's better than ever. Perfect. Good thing winter's almost over. So how's she ride? Oh, it's fantastic. I can't, I've never owned a better snowmobile. Oh, I think that's a wrap. Hopefully on the next episode, we'll uh, have something else interesting for you. Thanks for watching. See you. I should start recording. Yeah, look at that, we're recording. Okay, hold on. Not hold. Is that in frame like that? It's in frame like that. Perfect, do it. Still a frame? Kind of.